That's right. Last time we started using Chris, who is in the prison. He found out that Claire is not there anymore from Rodrigo, who is dead because he was eaten by a worm. Poor Rodrigo. So now, as far as we know, Chris is the only living person on this island. Claire's not here, and Chris doesn't even know about Steve. Chris cannot be concerned about Steve, for he is ignorant of the existence of Steve. Okay, what do we want to take with us? Um, Alright, we got those submachine guns. I can probably just put my handgun away. Might as well keep the bow gun for emergencies. It's got the explosive arrows. Okay. These are the same... I think these are the same Uzis that Steve was using. I think it would be just be the same model. Same power. Some herbs and such, but we want to keep our inventory light as we go, at least for now. He's not breathing anymore. We would give him a proper burial, but... You know... You don't have time for that. I mean, at least he died in a crypt. And yeah, actually, that is a part of the island that Claire never never got to. She never went to that crypt. So what what is that connected to? It's connected to this room, the room of Steve Pathos. Oh. I got cautioned already. This battery has been removed. Can't use it. Alright, so here's where Steve, uh, found out that his dad was a zombie and almost let Claire got killed. This door's blocked. We couldn't possibly move this oil drum. Way too heavy. We don't know how... I guess Chris got on the island by boat. I suppose. But I guess he can't just go back to the boat. This is blocked. We went through this door previously. So this place blew up, remember? Some of these areas are looking okay. This room doesn't seem like any damage was done to it, except like a crate fell in front of this door. And we can't open this. This has always been locked. It's welded shut. But here's Alfred's tank. An old tank. I wonder why this is here. Well, we know Alfred hit a button on the back to make it move. There's a button on the panel. Right, so Chris has to find a way off the island, and I guess he also has to figure out where Claire went, because I suppose he doesn't know. Rodrigo said that the planes left, and Claire was probably on one of them, but Chris at this point would not know where they went. It's got to search for clues. So this hallway... This is where Alfred went. He used his gold halberd to open this door, and his fighter jet was behind it. There's a hole where the halberd once was. So we know that his jets... That's like his uh, air hangar back there, but we can't get in. We don't have a halberd. A battery. Well, there was a battery that was removed from that one device. We should probably take it. Well, hold on there, Mr. Redfield. That's my own personal battery. I just left it out on the floor. Doesn't mean you're, you're entitled to just steal it. Jeez, I tells you. You think you can just leave you leave your personal items around without having to lock them up. Then the cops come and just take them. I believe you don't have any jurisdiction on this island, Mr. Redfield. This, does, this don't look like no raccoon city to me. Uh, 
getting grabbed. There we go. How much ammo did I use on that? 58% left in the Uzis. There's a blue herb in case they poisoned me. And a green herb, which I certainly could use. And what's this? Shotgun ammo. Foreshadowing. For a weapon that we don't have. But look at this battery. Large capacity battery pack. This must be used to operate a big machine. Dot, dot, dot. Uh... I can't... It's too blurry to read what that says. Something about stolen? Can't tell. Oh, wait, I... No, let's get it started is what the first line says. I don't know what the second line says. But the first one is absolutely let's, let's get it started. Text that you're not actually supposed to read. Watch out! This battery is high power. Um, and then it gets, uh, it gets too blurry. Can't read the other line, but watch out. We need to watch out. And we got a save room. Already. That's nice. So as thorough as Claire was as she explored the island, there are some rooms that she never actually got to, like this one. We'll take some acid rounds. That's always good. There's also something odd over here. Drawers. They're colored. Blue, red, green, brown. I could try opening one. Nothing's in it. And ask me if I want to open one. That last one's locked. I smell a puzzle. How do we solve this puzzle? But Chris has a lot to worry about. He's terrified about what happened to his sister. But he's always down for a good puzzle. I mean, he survived the Raccoon City uh, mansion. He had to do some puzzling. Lava burns forest, flows to sea, forms the earth. Yeah, that's what it says. All right, so here's our clue. Open the drawer. Okay. So first is lava, which is red. Lava burns forest, which is green. It then flows to ocean, which is blue. And it forms new earth, which is brown. I can't take any more items. So that's a gold luger in there. We'll take the gold luger. Thing is, it's not a weapon. We can't actually use it. So why is it in there? No, not that. There we go. Luger replica. Alfred has a thing for gold Lugers, I guess. Replica gun modeled after the Luger. It has a nice decoration on it. It can't be used as a weapon. All right. Yeah, it says Luger right on the side. G right there. So, this doesn't do anything in the game. But, since we got it, once we complete the game, that means it unlocks Steve for the battle game, which is the, the post-game thing. You know how a lot of Resident Evil games, after you complete the, the main game, it'll have, like, some bonus mode. In this one, it's called the battle game. And now we've just unlocked Steve as a playable character in the battle game. That's what that's for. Which is confusing. Because you might think as you're playing this game that that's gonna, that Luger's gonna do something. Like maybe it's a puzzle item. Uh, it is not. It does nothing. There's a manhole cover right here. 
tightly shut. I can't open it from here. But maybe we can open it from a different direction. Let's put the battery in here. And I guess Alfred, instead of fixing the bridge up there, just decided, hey, let's install this lift. I guess that's better than just fixing the bridge. We got a chem storage key. There's a file. Let's see, can we read anything on that? It says... From Fremlingham Castle... Suffolk? History... Um... I can't really... I, I can see, like, the, the headings. There's history, site, defense, entrance... Something wall... In... Um, internal... Does I say business? I'm not sure. Changes weapons. Internal buildings is what that says. Um, so it's talk. It's like talking about a castle. I, su I assume this is text about a real castle. That's not what the file is about. This is about enhanced anti-decay alloy. That document does not look like we were just what we were just looking at. Although we plan to utilize the enhanced anti-decay alloy called Deploid to create the storage capsule of the new BOW. We had to cancel the plan. This is primarily based upon the fact that despite its excellent resistance to all kinds of liquid, including strong acid, it's easily dissolved when soaked with a mixture of the two chemicals, the two clements, which, I mean, good thing there's going to be, we're going to have both of those here. Due to the lethal nature of the new BOW, we cannot be too careful in choosing the material for their storage capsule. We have instead decided to use Deploid to create the plate portion of the Eagle Plate, which shines in indigo blue. Clement information. Well, we got two types. The one's used for gun maintenance and possesses no conspicuous characteristics. It's completely plain, completely ordinary. No one would even give it a second thought. But the other one turns blue at a certain temperature. It's an odd coincidence that the temperature is exactly the same as the date of completion of this training facility. Wink. So, it, you can make it cold. It'll turn colors. They're going to update the file. All right. So there's a specific kind of metal which was used to make that the uh, indigo plates. And we saw, we used a couple of those as Claire. Turns out that you can get some chemicals that can dissolve those plates, but why would we want to do that? One chemical can be used in gun maintenance, and the other can be, well, the other one changes colors at a certain temperature. Let's keep that in mind. Queen. Who is that? The king was loved, but the queen was feared. Till Alexia? No! She's already fully awake. Court, an arrow pierced the heart. Chris, you're here? He Chris, I'm sending some down. company to keep you entertained. <laughs> Consider this a small welcoming gift from me. Enjoy. <laughs> Who is that mysterious man? I couldn't make out his face. 
Well, as we can see, that Chris is not the only living person on this island. There is someone else here who seems to know Chris from somewhere. Chris better look out. That seemed like uh, that figure, whoever that was, seems like they're not. They're not, they've got bad intentions, malevolent purposes. Here's an elevator. All right, where do we want to go? Well, let's try the basement. As we go into the basement, we'll see something kind of odd. There are stairs going down there. That wasn't the case before, but these stairs have been lowered. Which is a good thing, because if we try going in here, something's a little different right now. Yeah, when uh, the place exploded, the ventilation system broke, and now there's poison gas in this room. So this says that the breaker may fail due to overload, and we have to raise the lever to get it working again. The problem is, we can't get to that lever. Ventilation fan is stopped. Gotta find a way to that lever without going through the gas. Doesn't seem to affect the zombies. They're fine. And what's this? A gun of shot. Well, Chris will take it, but... So those go up. So the shotgun acts as a switch for this area. So Chris would like to take- oh, look at this water. The water is still good. Chris would like- I'm glad Chris gets to see this great water. Chris would like to take the shotgun, but... He does need it to bring those stairs... back down. Might as well take these while we're here. Uh, let's take a look at our new items. Get a closer look. Here's chem storage key. Key made of metal. The word chemical warehouse is on the tag. That is not what that says. That clearly says YBT is in the house. Tap the... I can't... Tap the something. I can't read the last word. But we, we know YBT is in the house. And it's, it's backwards on, on the side. <laughs> Alright, so that leads back up here, and now we've opened up this manhole, so we've made a shortcut for ourselves back to this room. Let's just store these red herbs. Actually, let me store... I can store the bow gun, since I have the shotgun for right now, until I have to use it as a switch again. And actually, how's my... how's my Uzi ammo doing? 53%? That's probably fine for for right now. Alright, some handgun ammo there. I think that's an ink ribbon. I'm not really picking up the handgun ammo anymore. I got weak... We're loaded with weapons. Like, if I have- if I really have to start using the- if I have to start using the handgun, then we've got a problem. I mean, I might want to. But we shouldn't have to. And Claire never got into this lab either. Oh, this is the Tyrant Capsule. 
A large size capsule. I wonder what was inside. Chris, you can clearly see on the front of it, it says T078. You probably have an idea of what that means by now. Let's push a switch. So for some reason, someone stored some ammo on top of this capsule. It's for the AK-47, which Claire got in, in Antarctica, but has been teleported here in the box. So, you know, it's a good thing we put that AK-47 in the box, because now Chris can use it with more ammo. Again, sometimes... So it, it was a little frustrating. It's a little frustrating your first time through the game when you don't know when and, wh and why certain things need to go in a box and when it doesn't. So, you know, the bomb that blew up this island, I feel like it wasn't all that powerful. Like, yeah, this room seems a little trashed. Not that bad. We've been in this room before. The switch is broken. And down here... Maybe I should change to the shotgun. Down here. <clears throat> a doorknob. Hey, remember that one door that did not have its knob? Claire was never able to open that door. But Chris has now found the required knob. We've taken the doorknob. And so here are some hunters, which, you know, I did not expect to see when I first played this game all the years ago. Uh, because, you know, Resident Evil games generally will have new new types of enemies aside from zombies. But now they're bringing back RE1-style hunters straight from the mansion. Chris is very surprised to see them. But who would be who would have access to hunters? That mysterious man was able to bring them to the island, but who was that man, and how did he have these? <clears throat> Control panel for the turntable. There's a keyhole. I do not have a key for it. So, yeah. Um, there's a point in RE games where the enemy difficulty kind of ratchets up like when you're around halfway through the game we're like a little over halfway but uh, this is that point where we're not really worried that much anymore about zombies because now hunters are showing up also claire was not able to go in here but i guess it must the the gas must have been vented so we can chris so chris can now grow in here it's been badly broken the t-virus could have leaked out all right so what is in here we got the key for this though i no longer need the key we'll discard it but what's in here well, we read about the Clements. Hey, I can't tell which of these is useful. Which of these is the one I need to take? I can't tell. So, one of the Clements will change color at a certain temperature, and the temperature happens to coincide with the founding of this facility. Now, if you may remember, there was that one room that had a model of the facility, a diorama. And there was a pedestal that said that this this diorama was here in honor of the opening of the facility on December the 8th. We still we can still go to that room if you're wondering. You don't get locked off from it. Like Chris could if Chris went to the first floor, he would run into that room.
It's blue! We got it. It's a chemical used to dissolve enhanced alloy. It glows at a certain temperature. Are you sure about that? Because that says medical liquid B. This medic in blood belongs to some belongs to a man whose blood type is Cl Clyde. That can't be right. That that it's hard. It's very hard to see. The man who used this product must have the same blood type that might be what it says but the text is very small I can't read it it's it clearly says this is a medical liquid though I almost forgot about him you might notice he's a different color than the other hunters. What makes him different? This delightful fellow is a poison hunter called a sweeper. So he is like a hunter, except he can poison you. That's why there's a blue herb right here. But fortunately, I did not get poisoned when he hit me. Also, if you come in this room to take the Clement before you get the doorknob, he does not come out of here. Because, you know, the hunters have not been introduced yet. You have to get the doorknob so you can get the dramatic cutscene showing the hunters. So you can just... Like, that guy just won't come through the wall. If you get it before the doorknob. Alright, what do we got? We got Clement, we got doorknob... Well, let's get to that door that has no knob, so we can use a knob. Now, I, ha I want to go up the stairs, so we're going to have to hang this shotgun. Let's go to the second floor. So let's see. We have the doorknob. The, the, the door without knob is this way. Hey, it's an indigo plate. Aw, oh, shucks. Well, that was an odd sound. It sounded like electricity. So, the, the explosion did some damage here. The eagle plate has flown into the sewer. There seems to be a passage below. Are there some parts where the explosion actually caused some substantial damage? Right, that first indigo plate, we used it here. It's horribly collapsed. We don't actually know why we need it, though, do we? Well, maybe we can make a guess. However, watch out. So that's the thing that saw Chris and summoned the hunters. So now they're in these levels. Watch out if you go into a room, one of those might be in there. If it sees you, 
Hunters will be a coming. Also, there's a side pack, so it's very good. All right, two more slots. Remember in RE1, Chris had six slots. I'm glad since then Chris learned how to have more pockets. Well, no response. Seems to have been broken due to the fire. There's some bowgun ammo. Yeah, okay. I mean, we don't we don't need it. We have tons of bow normal bow gun ammos. Oh, we could go down here. But this is still closed. This will never open. That door is very serious about its job of never opening. Alright, here's the door that has no doorknob. I will use the doorknob. I set the doorknob. I will now use the doorknob. Alright, the mysterious room behind the doorknobless door is just another floor of this big room where Steve killed his father. But it's important, because this is here. It's a tank object. A miniature old tank is placed on the base. But what could we use this for? And this is broken. Well, that's, this tank looks a little like the, t the actual tank that Alfred has in this base. But why would that be relevant? Yeah, so that sweeps back and forth and turns off for a second and then turns back on. We'll try not to get spotted by them. Let's go to the first floor now. Barely touched me, but I got through the door in time. Alright, the diorama room. So this has a diorama of the military base, and there is like a square, little rectangle over there. There's a hole to put something in. Yeah, let's put in its missing piece. It's missing the tank! Gotta be accurate here. All right, we got the turntable key. And a file, which is... Secret passage note. The underground passage which leads to the mansion where Alexia and I live has been badly damaged. Although I can never allow the unwashed to see Alexia. I could not go on using the underground waterway that those local people made either. Oh, yes. I think I'll have those prisoners build a bridge. It must be a gorgeous bridge that befits the perfection that is Alexia. Of course, I must kill everyone who's involved in the construction of the bridge after it is done, so that no one will know after the ex about the existence of our mansion. But that is okay, as I have no problem executing such matters. Once the bridge is completed, I'll seal the mansion entrance door at the end of the underground waterway. The, un the entrance of the waterway is locked by the diorama trick, ensuring the secrecy of our mansion. 
Alfred Ashford. All right. There's a secret passage. Uh, so he had some workers build it and then killed everyone after the project was done. Look, Alfred, that kind of practice won't fly. You're supposed to lay everyone off when the project's done. It's a big difference. Something is written beside the hole. Lead three armies here, and the path will open. Well, okay, so we got three hexagonal shapes. It's talking about three armies. So we remember the military crests that Claire used to uh, reach the airplane. Those three crests would still be at the airport. We don't have them here, though. But something's going to open if we get that. When approaching from this side, I guess the scanner isn't there. Also, this entire game, you can never go through that door because that oil drum is on the other side. It's just not possible to move that oil drum. Completely impossible. Alright, so I got the turntable key. Um, let's see. Yeah, we want to get back to the room where we got the doorknob because that's where the turntable is. Yoink. And we'll, well, let's just pop into that save room for a sec. My Uzi still have 43%, but, you know, let's replace it with the AK that has 84 plus 50. So, you know, we'll have more ammo as we go. And make some space. There we go. All right, so we're heading back to that room with the turntable. Which is the, the same turntable that Claire and Steve went down on. Time for Claire to go... No, time for... Not Claire, but time for Chris to go up it. And where will that take him? <laughs> Long time no see, Chris. Wesker? Still alive? <laughs> what are you doing here? I came for Alexia. Who? An organization hired me to capture her. Wait. You attacked the island. And my sister. So now I've sold my soul to a new organization. Now, die. Here's a little secret, Chris. I figured out that your sister is now in the Antarctic. With Alexia. 
It's too bad you won't be seeing her again. <laughs> Alexia? <laughs> 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 Oh no, no time to think about that. There's a Bandersnatch. And that's the last Bandersnatch of the game. No more after this. Alright, but Chris got quite a shock. As it turns out, Wesker is a lot. Wesker is alive? What are you doing here? Great, just great voice acting. Wonderful. So Wesker, of course, died in RE1. Chris is very surprised that a dead man is standing in front of him. And also uh, very surprised to, to see that Wesker has become a uh, Neo, as he now has he now has superpowers. And, you know, I'm... As far as the mainline RE games go, I'm not sure about the side games. So there are plenty of side games I haven't played. But I'm pretty sure in the mainline games that this is the first point where they establish the idea that maybe one of these viruses, instead of turning you into a mindless monster, can instead give you superpowers. Of course, this is an idea that they would revisit as the series would go on. But previously it was, well, you don't want to get infected with a virus. It'll just turn you into a zombie or a monster. You don't want any of that. This one, hey, how about maybe superpowers? Maybe that can happen? It, like, it's rare, but it's happened to Wesker. Let's use the turntable key. Now, why and how did that happen? Well, then we're not, that's not going to be addressed in the game. That's like extended material. Uh, that we're talking about. As, as far as this game goes, the only thing we know, Wesker is alive, he is a superpower man now, uh, and he's working for someone else, apparently. And he's here for Alexia. So, the whole thing about why was the, uh, island attacked, who attacked it, and why, it was Wesker. Wesker the whole time. Let's move a box. And Chris was mad about that, because it means that he also attacked his sister. But in a way, Wesker helped out Claire. Because if he didn't attack the island, she would still be a prisoner here. And we know that prisoners don't last long here. We read some journals that established that. All right, let's get on this, because up here... Oh, did I not push it close enough? You can, you can reach out and grab that, Chris. I'm confident that you could grab that. And there we go. He did. Anyway, noticed that up on there earlier, but yeah, we can now get it. All right, where do we want to go? Do we want to go outside? Or do we want to go in this room? So, of course, Wesker's return, real big deal, uh, when it came to the hype for Code Veronica. Villain from the first game, coming back after not being in two or three. I mean, Chris was surprised. But, I mean, he's on the title screen. Like, you, the player, are not surprised. You might be surprised that he's uh, that he has powers. Which, is, which was also very cool for the time. This is also the point in Wesker's, um... In his history, where his whole thing is that he wants to collect a whole bunch of viruses. So, you know, he's heard about Alexia's experiments, I guess, and he's here to, to find out what the what kind of product she's made, get his hands on it. Like in RE4, when he hired Ada to receive the, uh, the sample, the Plaga sample, 
He just wants to get all the things. Get all of them. Here's a lever. So this is the ventilation device right there. So we had to approach that from another side. And now we're going to drain this out of gas. Oh, he's still alive? Yeah, he's alive. All right, so... Hmm? Someone else in here? I guess so. So Chris has got a problem. I mean, he's already had a problem that he's been looking for Claire, but how is he supposed to deal with Wesker, who just manhandled him? Just com a complete handling of this man. And also, he's got hunters. It's too much to deal with. I don't think you can go through there. Oh, you know... Okay, we don't need it, but let me just go back for a second. Just one of those things where I think, eh, you know, I don't need to do it, but I... You know, I, I guess I will. It'll just take a sec. So, I don't know if it... I don't... I don't know if it's... Uh, it's probably not canon or anything, but I think that a big... Uh, I think that the general consensus is that... When uh, Chris got his ass handed to him by Wesker, this was the thing that inspired him to get real big for RE5. Because he had to, like, do something, right? He had to do something to prepare for this. Because clearly he's not that big yet. This version of Chris is, um... He looks pretty similar to how he did in RE1. And of course, it was a considerable surprise when he showed up in 5 looking the way he did. But it was all because he was he had to get gains, massive gains to prepare for Wesker. Okay, why did I come back here? I can put these away for the time being. I might as well take a green herb. And let me take Chris's handgun. I'm not actually going to use the handgun, but I mean... There's like a little thing we can do with it. And you know what? The idea that Chris had to had to get into some serious weight training and you know um, enhancements maybe for Wesker it follows because uh, the next because then in the future you see Chris again in RE Seven and he's a lot smaller. He looks a lot like in RE Seven. He looks a lot like how he does here. So clearly, since Wesker is done and dusted, uh, he was able to just relax on the enhancements. And, and all the training. Didn't need it anymore. Didn't. It's unhealthy to be like that for too long, you know? You don't want to be like that for too long. Actually, let's see. Um, nah. I want to get back to that, the room above us.
Okay. Reason I just wanted to take a little detour there was to get Chris's handgun back. Because in this room, there's a curious desk. It's a work desk. Various tools are placed on it. I can modify my Glock 17 here. Yeah, so this, is for, this desk is for Chris. Uh, Claire was not able to use it to modify her handgun. But Chris can. What do we get? We've gotten the enhanced handgun. What does the enhanced handgun do? It's modified. It's modified. <laughs> That's it. It's, look, we modified it, okay? Is it better? It's modified. It's modified. There we go. Doesn't tell you anything. I don't actually know. I, I guess it's more powerful, probably. You'd expect that, right? It doesn't actually tell you that. But the, the real reason that we came here, in, as opposed to modifying our gun, is to get this. This is the other Clement. Now that's the first one. This one looks the same. Just says Medical Liquid A. It's a different color. But we can combine them to get Clement Mixture. It's purple. It's purple now. It can dissolve diploid. All right. Well, this can dissolve the indigo plate, but we don't have an indigo plate. We saw an indigo plate previously. It fell into some water down into an underground passage. But what do we do about that? Well, let's see. Um, if I took the shotgun, the stairs would go up. I could then... Well, let's just leave it there for the time being. I have enough ammo in my AK, I think. There was one door that we didn't go through. See, actually, that one goes out to no, getting getting confuzzled. Uh, Chris has a lot of twists and turns as he goes through the base. What we want to do is we want to go back out to the front of the military base. Pre we got there before, but then we went into a side door, which took us around where we eventually got the uh, the Clement. Right. We want to go down here, I think. Or do we? Or maybe we want to go up here. I remember the first time I played this game, it took me quite a while to work out what Chris needs to do in this base. Because we know that what he needs in the diorama room are three military crests. Proofs, even. 
And we know those proofs are in the airport. But the airport is tough to get to at this time because of, you know, the explosions. Right, here we are. We can go outside. Now, previously, when we would go outside as Claire, the gulp worm would be here. However, we killed the gulp worm. Does that mean it's safe out here? No, it's not. Actually, it's worse than before. Actually, I'm pretty sure that room, when I first played through the game, I'm pretty sure that room caused me more deaths than any other part of the game. You only have to go through it twice. If you know where to go. Alright, here is a box. And let's see. You know... Let's put this shotgun ammo away. We're carrying some acid rounds. And acid rounds, they do pretty okay against hunters. There it is. All right, let's get going. Yeah, only one hit. All right, so where do we need to go? Well, we're in the airport now. We want to get to where the airplane used to be. Well, except, oh no. The bridge is not here. The bridge is up. Claire had to move the bridge up so the plane could go. We gotta move that bridge back down... ...so we can get to the plane. Well, the plane's not there. I mean, where the plane used to be. Because that's where the crests are. The proofs. The military proofs. The hexagons. You know. The things. That activate the thing. All right, here's the lever to bring it down. There's a lever. Lower it. But of course it doesn't work. There's not enough oil pressure. Can't operate it now. All right, gotta fix the oil pressure, which is, you know, something that comes up now and again in a Resident Evil game. You might even recognize the puzzle. So this oil regulator is broken. This de this device controls the bridge's oil pressure. It's out of order. It must be operated manually. Let's read the notice. Manual operation. So, one, supply oil to the 10 liter tank using three cylinders. Two, the standard oil amount must be maintained. If oil isn't at the standard amount of seven liters, the device will not activate. Be careful. All right, let's, let's do it. Okay, so there's one, three, and five, except one is broken. So we only have three and five, and we have to fill ten. No, we have to fill seven. The one at the bottom can hold ten, but it has to be at the red line of seven. So let's fill it with five. Nice sound. Actually, do I, did I have to do the threes first? Maybe I had to do the threes first. It's at eight right now. All right, it's at one. So now I can drain this. That's one. And four. And three. A beep, okay. So you can do it that way. 
Now it's all spinning up. Hey, 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 hold on there. You're not authorized to do maintenance to that. You need to be, you need to have certification. Sir. I don't, I don't come to your police station and tell you how you should fight monsters. Here's shotgun shells. Yeah, you can just walk out of the room when they stand up. But I mean, there's like a box of shotgun shells. Anyway, this room is a little bit damaged, but it seems mostly fine. Maybe the fish survived. There were fish in that aquarium, but it seems like they probably should be okay. I don't know, I think that one... Something about survival horror games that never stops being funny to me is the idea of the monsters getting up and attacking you after you solve the puzzle. They could have done it, like, when you're in the middle of it. They just get annoyed that you, that you won, that you solved it, or fixed the machinery. All right, bridge is down. You can hear someone walking. You can't see him because of the camera angle. But we can hear footsteps. Oh, he survived that. That guy can take you by surprise. So, I don't think we've seen that yet, but now some of the zombies can have, like, a bomb on their back? I don't know why. I'm not really sure what the reason for that is. Oh, look at these cool, like, goggles they have. There's no reason for it, but just to have, like, that cool, uh, light trailing effect. It's gonna be, we get a, I can't really get a better look at it. There we go. Why, why do they have that? It looks cool. That's why. Do you need a better, you need another reason? Yeah, there we go. The fish are still there. Like, there's no one around to feed them, but... Doesn't seem like they were jostled or anything. I was getting sassy there. Thought I could get around him without him seeing me. Like, that is- that is what speedrunners do, I believe. Is they get around without the hunter actually seeing them. Alright. Here are the- here are the military proofs. All right, we got those things. Now we can go to the diorama room. Considering how important these proofs are to actually get around this base, it seems strange that they were left scattered around the way they were for Claire to collect. Um, yeah, we came from here. I'm a little bit hurt. Uh, 
Uh, actually, I think I want to just do a little, maybe a safety save right here. No, not that. Shouldn't be a problem because we got the grenade launcher. But I mentioned that the room, like the room above us, is the one that would kill me more times than any when I uh, first played this game. It's the that's the outdoor room with two hunters in it. It's a little different on the way back. Like even if we killed the hunters. There still would have been enemies in this room. They repopulate them. So it doesn't actually matter if you kill them. Except this time... They're poisoned. I did get poisoned. Okay. Yep, there we go. I thought I would be able to get him before I got... Before I got got. I did not. Let's get let's go get a blue herb. Okay, so, um, one thing that I think maybe got glossed over a little bit. No, not that. We were such in, so in shock about Wesker being alive. Oh, there we go. That we might have glossed over the point where he told Chris, Hey, Chris, your sister is in Antarctica. With Alexia. So, now Chris has some kind of direction. Why didn't Wesker kill Chris right there? Wesker seemed to be distracted by Alexia laughing at him, so he just kind of threw Chris into uh, the capsule with the, had the Bandersnatch. Could have killed him right there, did not. And because he didn't, Chris now knows uh, that he needs to go looking for Claire in the Antarctic. I guess, I guess that's enough information. Don't need to get any more specific. We now know that we need to get out of here. Oh, is that? Yeah. Did I get this? Maybe I did. There were some acid rounds in there. Maybe I got them. So I believe we've now gotten everything that we need to. Don't think there are any more items or such that we need to run around to get. The important thing is that we have the three crests. I keep calling them crests. I mean, I guess technically they're not. They're proofs. So let's head to that diorama room. So we are now heading to the actual boss for this whole area. Chris knows he doesn't need to be here. He needs to be in Antarctica. But we do have to we do have to have a boss fight before we leave this base for good. It only makes sense. Let's put these in here.
some kind of lever, I will lower it. Before we go down, make sure we take some stuff here. Okay, let's go down Alfred's secret passage. Only he knew about it because he killed all the workers who made it. Some spiders, but eh, you know, we're in a rush. Chris doesn't have time to mess around. All right, so what is the boss for the prison? Well, the whole island, really. The whole island in general. What is the boss fight for this? That's right, the baby albinoid grew up! The baby albinoid escaped from the lab and got through the vent. Now it's an adult. You forgot about the albinoid, but it's here. And it doesn't want us to take that plate. Alright, so, pay attention. This, this boss fight can be tricky. And there we go. All right, we did take damage. So it wasn't a flawless fight. So yeah, we don't actually, we don't need to kill it. Uh, we just need its plate. We can just leave it alone. Okay, this indigo plate. Ashford family crest. An eager eagle grasps a gold halberd. The indigo blue por plate portion appears to be made of special alloy. It's true. And we now have the chemical that we can use to dissolve the alloy. Which gives us... A halberd. It's an object that has been placed on the eagle plate. It's made of gold. And looks like a middle age halberd. Well, as we saw in a cutscene earlier... Alfred uses one of these as a key. So goodbye, albinoid. Have fun in your pool. And they came up with good uh, battle music for it and everything. Alright, we got the halberd. And when Chris first got to the island, well, early on, uh, he found a door that had a halberd lock. Uh, yeah, we want to go back, back down to Biff. And now we can actually take the shotgun permanently. We don't have to put it back again. You know, I suppose Chris should probably tell someone about this whole place. Like, there's still zombies and monsters and viruses. Probably someone should come in to, I don't know, clean it up. You don't want to just leave it out here where someone could find. 
It's not really on his mind right now, though. Alright, let's do a little inventory stuff here. Do I have any other shotgun shells in here? Alright, and I'll do a save. And even though we saved, before we take a break, we will see what Chris finds on the other side of this door with his gold halberd. Well, we already know. We know it's Alfred's uh, air hangar where his fighter jet is. Well, was. He already took his fighter jet. Is there anything there left for Chris? So, you know, it's been a while, but I'm pretty sure that the manual for Resident Evil 1 says that Chris was an Air Force pilot. So Chris being able to fly the jet cannon, why was he already a former Air Force pilot in his early 20s in Resident Evil 1? I don't know. Anyone's guess. Uh, but yes, he, he can fly that. Uh, and apparently he had enough information to, f to find the Antarctic base, or maybe there was an autopilot, possibly. Maybe. I don't know. But if he, he's here. He is here now. And he needs to find out what the status is of everyone in this base. We know Alexia is up and walking about. Uh, Alfred appeared to be dead. Claire and Steve, last time we saw them, they did seem pretty dead. But who knows? Um, Nosferatu certainly seems to be dead. So Chris is going to be walking around. He's going to try to find his sister. As we continue on with Resident Evil Code Veronica, and don't forget about that wildly dastardly Wesker. What is he up to? He wants to get the viruses. We know he wants that. And will he get what he wants? We'll find out as we continue on with Resident Evil Code Veronica. <laughs> 